Hey, so I'm really excited today because we're going to be taking a first look at Logic, a new updated version, Logic 10.5, although it's kind of like a whole new version completely redesigned, and it has live loops, which I'm going to demonstrate for you today. So essentially you still have your old arranged window, but you also have running in parallel, in tandem, this whole new grid system where you can drag and drop loops, you can create your own loops, and then you can trigger them in what are called scenes. So let's talk a little bit more about cells and scenes and how they enhance the creative process. Let's have a look into the grid results. So let's just have a little brief introduction to some of the kind of fun bits. So I've got some beats and loops that I've already pre-made here. So you can see at the bottom, it's almost like a kind of graph where now we've got a, an X and a Y. So let's just kind of trigger something basic. So you can see on the next one, I'm just queuing up. Now obviously at the moment I'm moving along in a very linear sense, but the beauty of this is that you don't have to be stuck in a linear kind of motion. You can kind of jump around from a little bit of a break to another section of the track. And this is what just makes arranging so much more fun and a much more intuitive experience, and not only that, a much faster. So a cell is essentially a name for a loop, so it could be a loop that you've dragged and dropped, or it could also be something that you've created yourself. So I'm sure you know how to use the loop browser. One of the ways we can get really easily stuck in is we just grab and drag, as we did before, onto a track. It appears as one of these little squares, which is a cell. And you can trigger that cell either by clicking on the row at the bottom, which is essentially a scene. So when you get a row of cells, you'll be triggering the whole row. Or you can also trigger it individually by just pressing inside the center of the square. Now let's say, for example, I want to use a loop that I've been auditioning and listening to, but there's, you know, there's a few notes in there that maybe I don't want to use. So let me show you a very quick way to activate a new pop-up window and speed your drag and drop process. So we're able to set up a channel strip here without actually having to go to the inspector or kind of set one up. We can just drag and drop and we can actually put this sample across the keyboard. So this really lives up to its name and it is a quick sampler. So I preferred having the kind of three. But let's record that in. You'll see a little circle appears on the screen. Now it will only appear on the track that I have active. It'll give me a bar count. So you can see there I ran over a little bit in terms of the loop size. So I'm now just opening this window here and I can just trim the top of this loop so that this still repeats in a four bar cycle. Very important because all of your loops kind of need to trigger together and have musical timing. So really important to go into the editor window and make sure that you trim your self-created loops. So let's start with a really simple beat. And you can see I've moved along to the next scene, the next row. And you can see different circle cycles are showing as there are different lengths to each of the cells. Now you can see that time when I moved along to the next scene, I triggered it, but it didn't actually start playing immediately. Now this is where we can set a global timing to when we will activate our scenes. Now this is in the top right of the window here. So you can see we've got quantized start. And this basically enables you to decide globally, so this will affect every scene in the grid window. And at the moment I've got it set to a bar and I suggest when you start that this is quite a good one to start with because it enables you to get used to cue points. But what's really great is that you're able to customise each separate scene as well. So as I've said, the scenes are these vertical slots, group of sounds and potentially one section of your arrangement. So you can see now that if we control click right at the bottom where we've got the arrow for the scene, we control click and another window opens and we have the same selection of quantizations and obviously we've got the global setting that we looked at before but we've also got some much smaller settings so let's let's start off with an eighth note this is something that's obviously really used in dance music so you don't have to have a whole loop you could just have a little bit of vocal or something on its own as a cell in one of these sections let's just also go back and try 16th so now i can trigger some fun rhythms. 
and you can see literally how tiny some of these increments are. So like I said, you can totally personalise as well all of the cue points, although it does take some practice. I think this will be easier for the kind of DJs and the electronic music people, and obviously this is who it's perfectly well designed for. So let's have a little look at how that would work if I were to do a little kind of dance breakdown section, for example. Then coming into the 16th. I want to show you quickly some of the ways that we cue and just some of the functions and ways that we can kind of stop loops when we want them to stop and start etc. So let me just trigger a loop and you'll see the little blue light will come on when it's about to come in. Cueing. And you've got this really handy circle up here in the top right as well tells you when the bar is about to hit. So this is really handy to keep an eye on in terms of when you should cue. Now you can see that I've stopped this scene, but it's still flashing. So if I hit the space bar to play, that exact same scene will trigger if I haven't gone and cued a separate one. So to actually stop that completely, we have um, a kind of master stop in the bottom right that we have to hit. And you can see all of the little indicators as to whether or not anything was working on that grid and playing at that current moment everything then stops so then we can just go to a new point and trigger again that one now flashing global stop so now I want to talk about how the two windows interact with each other. The window that you're used to, which is the usual arrange window, which we haven't really looked at yet. So to open that window, we can look here and we can then adjust um, the size. So I've got a little kind of loop set up for the section that I'm going to record. And you can have both windows open simultaneously. And when you do what I'm about to do, which is to trigger a little section and have it moving from the grid into the arrange window. So there's a kind of two point record setup that we have to do here. So first of all we enable the grid into record mode and then in order to actually record, so I'm just going to slide to the point where I'm going to start the song, then we actually use the normal route with hitting R. So hitting record, something basic to start with queuing up the next one. So they're coming in in those little bar drops, queuing. Down into a little breakdown section. See, I'm hovering, waiting to do the next one. Keeping my eye on the little bar. Vocal coming in. And this one is the one where I've got the 16. So I'm going to do a little drop. And then into the drop there. And you can see I'm now recording into the main screen as well. I'm going to get back to it. Don't really need my metronome now because I can really rely on the visual bar cell and global quantize. And you can also trigger another cell on its own individually. So I've now triggered a bit of a vocal that was actually in another scene. Going into a little breakdown in the section, just counting. I can now close my grid and just look exclusively 
and the track section. But I've got some greyed out sections here. So how do I actually now open up those? We just hit these little arrows here and these kind of toggle between the two windows even if one isn't active currently at that moment. So you can see now I have my arrangement with all the same colours um, placed into the screen and obviously you can do as many different arrangements as you want to at any given moment. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction. And I just love that there's just so much for people who make dance music here. I think it's very influenced, there's a lot of other features as well that you'll see that are really influenced by the kind of DJ culture and it really kind of speeds up the possibilities, especially if you're um, a professional and you often have to do different mixes, so a non-vocal mix for example, um, and then a kind of extended mix and then potentially a remix. So this is really great for when you're working um, within, for example, dance music where a lot of those mixes would be a kind of common delivery to your label. So if you want to look at my next videos, I will be looking in depth at the new sampler. So there's obviously the quick sampler and there is a whole new sampler with some incredible mapping and things that I will be showing you in the next video. So yeah, hopefully see you over there on those two. Bye.